Welcome to this tutorial on NumPy, Python's mathematical, major mathematical linear, linear algebra library. I am using here the Jupyter Notebook uh, P06 minus PyNum. Um, you might realize here that is just the section below the text file handling section. So you just need to scroll down a bit, a little bit to get here. To find that um, Jupyter Notebook, um, go to the course repository where you will find here the, Pi, the, uh, uh, the B06 panel, uh, IPMB in the Jupyter Python course. The beginning of that section is about the installation of NumPy, which requires maybe some attention. And I am just jumping over that here with the reference to the installation section, depending on what platform you're working on. So let's go directly here to the usage, assuming that NumPy is installed in, on your system. What you will typically do to import NumPy is to write import NumPy as NP. Then one of the most important data types of NumPy is the NumPy array. The way how you create such a NumPy array is by opening here the parentheses, then opening, opening another set of parentheses in which you have the actual set of numbers that you want to use for your array. So that is, would be basically a tuple of your um, uh, with two lists here of data that we want to have in that array. So let's just run that code here and look at the array that we created. This is basically a matrix if you want. So we created here a two times three dimensional array. Huh? Two rows, three columns. You can say now, well, I could also use a nested list for that. Well, true until here, but there are some particular aspects of dealing with NumPy arrays that make it very reasonable to use NumPy for handling nested lists better as an array when you deal with any mathematical operations. One reason is that NumPy is basically written in and C. So Python just wraps here around uh, C functions and these C functions are massively faster than any Python code. So whenever you can use built-in functions from NumPy for any array handling or for any mathematical operations, it's faster by orders of magnitude. I will come back to some application examples in the following, so not only in this tutorial, but also in other tutorials on Python. Let's look at some built-in properties of an array in NumPy. So I'm just running here in that code block a bunch of print statements. The first one just returns me the data type, so NumPy and the array. Uh, the second one gives me here the array dimensions, so that's with a dot shape command. The dot size command here returns me the total number of entries, so that's different from the shape, and this is six, huh? two, two times three. And the number of array x's returns me here the number of rows. Finally, there are also options here, other options here to create a NumPy array. So you do not actually need to use here that tuple version to create a NumPy array. You can also use a list with tuples nested into that or just a nested list. You can also then define here the data type. So what are the data in your NumPy array? Um, you may want to use complex data. I will never do that here in, in the following. And it's just as an example what you can use here. So that would add, add here the um, imaginary parts of numbers.
You may also know from other mathematical programs that are rather commercial that you can create entry matrices or in the NumPy language empty arrays and you can do that here with for instance here np.0 zeros to get an array of zeros you can also create an empty array of ones well empty array is not empty actually there's ones in there um, you will define with that here um, with that statement here the size of the array the d type will assign the um, data type of the single array entries if you're using here the numpy float 64 um, that is probably the most precise as you can get uh, just pay attention here that np.float data types are um, more and more replaced now with the built-in Python float types. So you will rather than use your probably other data types in the future. So just float. Or if you're using floats, rather don't write anything about the data type anymore. If you want to create an empty array, just with, no with nothing in it, you can just use the uh, command n numpy.empty. So just to have a look how that looks like, but I just here created me here an empty array that is basically full of uh, once again. The little bit of a weird numbering here is an artifact of using here the data type np.int16. Whenever you can, you want to use a data type with less precision because that uh, um, is less costly in terms of computational uh, operation or co computational uh, costs. Um, but just recall that these uh, data types are going to be replaced uh, more and more by the built-in Python uh, data types. Some more uh, array options. So to create here just an, a 1D array that is a little bit similar to the range function in Python, you can use here the a range function. So that creates a 1D array. Um, also similar to the range function, first argument here is the lower limit. The second argument here is the upper limit. And the third one is the step width. So that produces two zero. Uh, 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. A useful option for reshaping arrays here is the dot reshape command, where the first entry represents the number of rows that we want to use, and the, th uh, the second one is the number of columns that we want to use. So that's what you're getting here, uh, 0, 2, 4 in the first row, and then 6, 8, 10 in the second uh, row. Why do we have here uh, this uh, 6, 8, 10 now? Well, I'm increased here the arrange function to 12. A little bit trickier maybe now is when you're having reshape with 2, 2, 3. Trickier in the sense of how you visualize it. Well, now we're creating a three dimensional array. So the three-dimensional array basically looks like this. It's on three axes and we're having now the numbers 1 to 12, 1 to 12 because I'm using here 13 as a maximum and as you've seen already it will not consider the last entry here um, in a three-dimensional array. Mm -hmm. So 2 here now is the number of, uh, of rows, 3 is the number of columns and 2 is the number in the third dimension. If you're looking for a linearly spaced um, 1D array, you can use here that numpy.linspace command. So in this case here, what I'm using is here again a lower limit. Then I'm using here the pi uh, um, number that is also implemented in numpy. And uh, this here is the number of uh, linearly distanced elements that I want to put here in that lint space. Very useful is also NumPy's random generator. So just pay attention here. If you want to use NumPy random, then you're using you need to use a random dot random. And that creates you here a random 
matrix here with the size of two rows and four columns. What is also useful are the statistics of an array, so the basic statistics, meaning um, what is the minimum and the maximum. You can also get um, the average and so on. We're going to come back to that later, or just the sum of an array. And that is how you can call those. Let's make a little excursion into color arrays. You might have heard of the so-called RGB colors, which basically mean red, green, and blue. If you want to represent these colors in a mathematical way, you can write them as a list that first holds the red value, second uh, the green value, and third the blue value. Just recall them if you're referring to that list in Python. This is actually not 1, 2, 3, but 0, 1, and 2. If one of these color tones has the value 0, that means it is not present. When it is 255, it has its maximum value. So if you want to write down a bunch of colors in a NumPy array for whatever reason, could be to create a nice plot or uh, something else colorful or image analysis, you can define the color black with 0, 0, 0. So red is 0, green is 0, blue is 0. If you want to get a red color, of course you need to put red to the, its maximum and all others to 0, green, you put the green channel to its maximum, blue, you put the blue, blue channel to its maximum. If you put all colors to its maximum, you're getting white color here run that, nothing happens, it just knows now your color set. Let's have a look at array or matrix-like operations in NumPy. For this purpose, I'm creating here in this code block two matrices that I'm calling A and B. They are random or they have random values. Uh, matrix A has two rows, four columns, a matrix B or array B has four rows and two columns. Then I can subtract maybe A from B, but I will need to transpose it because there I need the same array size to, trans uh, to subtract one array from the other. So let's look at the yeah, and that subtraction command. That's the result of the su uh, subtraction. I can also use an element-wise product of both arrays by using here a dot transpose multiplied by b. So the multiplier sign here represents the element-wise product. Now, if you want to use the matrix product, you have basically two options, and that is either using the add sign or you use the a dot function and in the dot uh, arguments use then matrix B. For these operations to be successful, just make sure that your matrix dimensions are coherent. All other operations that you would assign to a matrix or an array they are used here as element-wise operators. So if I'm using here that double uh, star sign, that means to the power of something in Python. So just here as a command, um, don't make the error here in, in Python and assume that this here would be the power to three and three. No, double star uh, and then three is power to the power of three here. So that is the element-wise power to 3 of A. Similar works the exponential function of NumPy, the square root function, the sine function, and so on. What is here another very uh, useful example in that uh, little code block here is 
the test for a certain condition of an array. So with that smaller than 0.3 sign, I am testing if any entry here in A is smaller than 0.3. And because A is a NumPy array, the uh, a smaller than sign here is actually not Python's bin built in smaller than sign, but it's a magic method if you want that is oper uh, that is here implemented now to NumPy, and that is massively faster than if you would loop on the whole array to find out which entries are uh, smaller than 0.3 in matrix A. So just keep that in mind for your further coding practices. Before I have mentioned already one option here to uh, sh manip manipulate the um, array shape, there was the reshape function where you would provide a number of um, rows, a number of columns, um, or however dimensions you want to give your matrix. And there are some more options. One here is the rebel option that will flatten your array. So this here takes uh, the matrix A and uh, flattens it into a vector. What you have also already seen above here is the transpose command that will just take A and transpose it. What I'm doing here in that case, I'm not only transposing A, I'm also concatenating or appending here uh, the array B. Here that is now another example of uh, everything um, you have seen by now. Um, here I am first transposing A, then I am adding B here, so I am creating a new array where I am combining both, and then I am reshaping the array here with uh, to, to the shape of 4x4, four four, and that is the result of that. If you recently did also the tutorial on file handling with Python, you might remember that I was using um, that NAN string here to characterize not a number values where my measurement precision was below one millimeter. So if I would use now that NAN string for any data analytics, then that string characteristic of that NAN values here would be a little bit problematic. Numpy has a very nice workaround here for handling such NAN, not a number values, with its np.nan data type. So let's use also the file handler from NumPy that is here called np.loadtxt, pretty similar here then functionally with the open function from Python. We would first provide a file name and then again we can provide a bunch of options. In this case here, this function also accepts a delimiter. So that is a little bit different from the open, the open function. And because I'm using now the modified data.csv from the above example, so that lives here, in the data folder, that is what I'm using, I will use now a delimiter that, I, uh, that is a comma. There are some other options that you could use here, so you could define um, the number of columns. So if you wanted to use only the second and the fourth column, then you need to write one and three, just remember counting from zero. So that would use only that column and that column here in this CSV file. If you want to skip the first rows, maybe because they contain something else, some description of your data file, um, then you can use here the skip rows um, keyword argument. There are many other keyword arguments here and I invite you to have a look at the NumPy documentation if you want to learn more about that. So let's run here that code block to use the modified data.csv and read it. So what happened here is it converted now the NAN values here to uh, numpy.nan. And what is 
interesting about that here is that this same data type here now is classified as a numpy float, so it's not a string. So the numpy.nan is a real number that has just no value, and that is very valuable for any uh, statistical operation afterwards. Just pay attention here, there's another function that's called np.load, and that would load uh, function, uh, data or pick up data from numpy pickles. So these are data files that are called .npnz or .np and, uh, .npy. If you want to learn more about these pickle formats, uh, then here uh, is the link to the numpy docs to read more about that. I have already mentioned that NumPy has some options for running statistic operations and those are actually pretty powerful. In this code block here I am exemplifying some applications to the experiment data so that requires that you run the, ex uh, the above uh, code block here to load the experimental data. And then I'm first here calculating the mean and second, the NAN mean. So what does that mean? Well, the mean here of the experiment data would return us NAN because our data set here contains numpy.nan values. If we want now our statistics without these NAN values considered, we need to use the non-mean function. You will find that none mean or that none add, uh, add, additive here, um, addition to any statistics basically for numpy functions, meaning for the standard deviation, you would use maybe np.std to get the none std. You can write np.none std and so on. So that is where we get here in the second row where I'm using the none mean, um, the mean value with 4.62. You can also just get the statistics along a certain axis. So if you have a two-dimensional array, then axis zero corresponds to the columns, so statistics along columns, and axis one corresponds to statistics along rows. So that means the maximum here for the axis is then the uh, dimensions of the array minus 1. I listed here a bunch of uh, command functions um, uh, for statistics uh, with NumPy. So these are just basic statistics functions for getting the maximum the minimum, you see here the none max, none min example. I basically always work with none min and none max and none min, so with these none functions, because nearby every data set somewhere has an uh, NAN value. Um, you can also get the percentile, the NAN percentile, and so on. If you want to get here a statistics in the sense of mean, so the average or the uh, standard deviation and variances, uh, or the median, you can use here the median function, average, mean, STD, and so on, and then none uh, combinations. For correlation analysis, um, Python computes here, for example, the correlation coefficient. So that here is the Pearson correlation of the Spearman correlation. That might be important for any data analysis. Um, so just recall um, that NumPy uh, calculates the Pearson product moment correlation coefficients with that function. You can also estimate the covariance and so on. If you want to plot then your data basically in NumPy, you can use the built-in histogram functions here to get um, uh, to get your statistics as a function of bins, ranges, and so on. You can create uh, 2D histograms or multi-dimensional histograms. Um, you can do bin counting or indices of the bins um, to which the values belong. There are many, many more uh, functions for statistics in NumPy and 
I invite you to have a look or just use even your favorite search engine if you want to find a specific function that serves for your data analysis. At the end of this NumPy tutorial, some remarks if you are smoothly transitioning from MATLAB-like software to uh, open source programming um, with a lot of functionalities. First of all, if you have MATLAB matrices stored somewhere, you can load such mat uh, MATLAB matrices with the scipy.io.loadmat um, command. So if you have NumPy installed, you also will have uh, scipy installed, you just need to import it. If you are using with uh, working with NumPy, just be aware that the np.array basically replaces MATLAB's matrix uh, notation. There is a little bit a historic um, sub-library here in NumPy that is called the np.matlib that enables you then to import commands like rand, zeros, ones, empty, i, things that you typically would maybe use in MATLAB and you loved in MATLAB. However, if you are switching from MATLAB to NumPy, I think it's a little bit comparable to getting a new bicycle or if you like cars, then it's probably like a new car. It takes you some time to adjust to the new gears, to the new brakes and so on. But basically you know how to drive that thing. You just need to find out what is the specific name for that function. So that is why I would also not recommend then here to use that MATLAB emulator here. That is the PyLab package. So you can also use here then that from PyLab import um, to overwrite then uh, plotting and array functions in Python. But again, I would not recommend it. Try to get started and familiarize with NumPy and its powerful and computationally efficient routines. Thanks for watching this tutorial.